Um, so thank you everyone for coming. Um, I, I like uh, so I'm I'm, gonna, I'm I'm going to be talking about event sourcing, and I know it's a Drupal topic, like a typical Drupal topic. Um, it's actually it's it's it's, it's uh, like a more type of uh, how you store your data, but I think it's an interesting topic nonetheless, and I want to talk about it. So um, I hope you guys will enjoy. So my talk is named uh, "The Future is a Thing of the Past," and yes, it is a very indescriptive title, um, but that's I think like the fun part about it. So my name is Mitchell. And I'm an event sourcer. A friend of mine made this. Uh, it's like the most ridiculous picture I've ever seen, actually. But I'll get later on what an actual event sourcer is. Um, so let's not waste any time because a lot of I, I have a lot of ground to cover. So let's just get it right into the core, right? So into our domain. Uh, so uh, in this talk, we'll, we'll be talking about having a board game, like running an actual board game online shop, and we'll be uh, covering a couple processes throughout this web shop. Um, we're going to sell a board game, or actually start selling a board game, and then we're also going to restock that board game because it, it's so popular, it got out of stock, and then you know, we have to restock it. So um, These processes are very domain-oriented, and which means that um, they, 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 they're actually very, very, uh, very much tied to the business and not some CRUD operation. They're, they're not, not some SQL query who are actually going to execute on, this, on, the, on the database or whatever. They're, 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 we like to use the language of, of, the, of the business, right? Because our manager might say, well, we have to restock the board game. But developers might say, well, we have to, I don't know, um, increase, the, um, uh, increase the stock integer on the, in the database, right? Th that equals the to actually restocking the board game. So um, this has a lot to do with domain-driven design. Who here has actually like, who, uh, heard of domain-driven design? Please raise your hands. All right, that's a couple, couple people. That's nice. Uh, domain-driven design is also known as DDD, or for the younger crowd, D to the double D quickly continue. Uh, so the, the domain driven design is all about understanding the business, like having, having conversations with the business, trying to understand how all the processes work between departments and everything, like how HR and how sales work together and, and how all those things just basically work. Like you have to understand how the business works before you can actually like make, and make, make a useful application for it or a website for it, right? So, and the domain driven design uh, in, in, in that aspect uh, fits very well with, uh, uh, or sorry, uh, f f it, that, that fits very well into domain events. So, what are domain events? Well, um, they are the concept behind event sourcing. So, the, the thing is that without event source, uh, without domain events, event, source, event sourcing would not work. And um, the thing, the, 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 it, it, it will work the other way around though, because you can have domain events in your system, and I'll, I'll explain like a little bit later what domain events actually mean or what they are. Uh, but you can have domain events in your system without using event sourcing, without event sourcing them, right? So domain events, they describe a change in your system. They, 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 they are kind of like facts in your system. Like how board game stock was replenished is a fact in your system. Like, uh, like we, we, we executed that action and then the stock was replenished of the system, uh, of the board game in our system, right? And these are a couple names of just the domain event examples. Like we have a member was registered, and somewhere like we have cargo ha cargo has shipped, or order was refilled, or even even if we if, if we run a, an application that detects earthquakes, for instance, uh, we can have earthquake has occurred, or or like some arbitrary thing, right? So what what you notice is all of these things have something to do with the language. They they, they are not um, some some technical. They they, they don't ex they don't have technical details. They don't have CRUD operations. They don't have all of that. Everyone can like basically everyone can read this and understand what what, what was happened, right? That there's no technical aspect to this. So uh, like we might have we might uh, have some normal class. So we might have something like this. But this this this, this is what, how how we um, how how we would normally do when when we have CRUD. But oh. Did it just drop? Oh, sorry. <laughs> cool. I didn't. I stopped here myself. So th th this is how, how we would normally have it, but we would actually w like want to want to look at this because th this is understandable for basically everyone. That that's what we, that that's what we might want to get to, right? So the words that you use in these in these names in these domain events are extremely important because if 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 one of those words actually means something else in a different department or like if you if you use uh, product, for instance, and product means something to, to means something different to someone else. Then you're gonna have conflict. So if you get, if you if you say like product was added to shopping cart, for instance, and someone thinks that product means something else, then you can have conflict in your business. You you, you can have conflict uh, conflict in this in the in this logic. And domain events also capture a change in time, and it tells you actually what has happened in the past. 
So again, in vague words, what, 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 like what are domain events or what are events? Well, events are a log, history facts, sentence stone, or, and sentence stone. But I thought I had more than that. Apparently not. So what does a domain event look like? What's the anatomy of a domain event? Well, it has a name and it has a payload, or it has data. Data. Um, it's one of the two. Like uh, I use payload, some other, uh, some other people use data. It's really uh, you can just use them interchangeably, right? So, um, using the uh, board game stock, which is plenty example again. Um, what well, what what we want is we want to have all these all these sm small little things. So we have the board game stock with replenished. We have the ID of the the board game, and I'm using uh, UUIDs, not incremental auto incremental IDs, because there's a whole lot of pain when you're using auto incremental IDs when you start to talk about distributed systems um, and just systems in general. And all like I I do not personally like auto incremental IDs. That's that's a personal thing. And then we also have the amount that actually was restocked, right? So these domain events are supposed to be very small um, and not something like member was updated with 78 or whatever, how many fields in, in there, because uh, that, this actually doesn't tell us anything. Like the, if, if we look at this, well, member was updated, but we have no clue what was actually updated. Like we, we, we would have to uh, dig into the data and then try to figure out, like to tr try to understand these patterns. And that is all gonna just cost us time and um, why not just store the correct events, right? <coughs> So what are some uh, conventions of these domain events? Well, first of all, I would like to say that please do not take, every, uh, the, please do not, do not take these conventions as absolute. Just look at them briefly, take them with a grain of salt, and then um, you know, create your own, basically. So first, the name. Use past tense because these domain events, like, because events have happened in the past, because these changes in, in our system have, have happened in the past, it's extremely logical to actually use past tense to, to, to use past tense in these in these names, right? And also trying to make sentences because it's easier to to read sentences than something that uh, is just basically unreadable for you. So you, you, you're trying to make it as humanly readable as possible. And then next, we'll leave out all the technical stuff like uh, cash keys or whatever in like like or, or other technical words in the name like. That all that, that doesn't really belong there because these domain events are something that is important to the business, and the business doesn't really. And when I say business, I mean like basically everyone. Is like the, the business is kind of like a weird concept, but the business is basically everyone that is not making the application that that is not actually writing the code, right? Like the, the, the you can have a business in whatever. Anyhow, I'll leave out the technical stuff. Um, who here actually plays Overwatch? No one. Damn, that's the first. <laughs> Anyhow, this is uh, game, the, like one of the games I play, and uh, they have a payload in there because, anyhow, I thought it was funny to add in there. So the payload, right? Again, leave out the technical stuff. If you have like a request ID or a cache cache ID or like anything technical, it, it doesn't really belong there because all these changes, like, like we, we can talk to our manager or like to, to, to our salesperson or to, to someone and say like. Well, we have a, like a, a request ID in there, and he's like, well, what does it do? Well, it, it, then, then you go into this huge ass monologue with him, and like he, he will not understand what, what's going on or something. So it doesn't really matter. Like It do doesn't belong in these domain events, because again, business. Uh, keep an eye out for the amount of properties. Um, I tend to go with no more than six or eight, but this is really like a like a like a soft limit. Um, I like if if your domain event needs more than that, like like ten or twelve or how many, it that doesn't really matter. Just um, try to keep an eye out because what, what what what's possible is that you can have multiple domain events actually like housed in the site. This one one event. So you, originally you, you thought that that one domain event would it was actually just just this one thing, but later on. You might come to an understanding that one of one one domain event has like two other domain events and uh, whatever. So you might want to take those out of, out of there, and try to use simple objects. What this means is um, instead of instead of in, in the data in, in the data, do, do not throw the like the entire object in there. Actually, try to just throw in identifiers in there, like these the small little concepts, these the small little objects, right? So some actual code finally. Um, here we have a domain event. It's extremely simple, as you all can see. Um, what it does, it, it implements a uh, an interface that has, sorry, uh, sparkling water, uh, that has um, 
just some getters basically in it. Like it, uh, I'll, I'll, like it's not not necessary to go into detail on that, but. Um, Right now, th this just uh, implements an interface and it uh, accepts all of the necessary data for this domain event. Like th this domain event doesn't need anything else. It doesn't need the name of the, of the board game or whatever because we, we already have all of this data somewhere stored, right? So what we need to, for, for this specific thing, for this specific change in our system, we need the board game ID because we need to know what board game was replenished. The, and we also need the actual amount. So what event sourcing is in a nutshell is instead of changing values, you just append events. That's literally it. Like, so thank you for coming, and see you in there. Um, <laughs> and so, and, 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 in other words, instead of instead of just modifying the columns in your database, you just create a new column and have all of the changes in there, all of the data in there, right? Um, so, um, yeah, with with event sourcing, we we literally only store events and like events only. So. A change in your system, like which means that it's changing like your state, because what you have is you have all of your member information in there, and that's all your state, right? All of your persisted application state. Um, we cannot have a state. We cannot have a state change without having events stored. Okay, that concept is uh, synced in. So, question is why? Why would we go through all of this information? Like, why, why would we go through all of this? All this effort. Of storing events and then and then instead of just you know just changing columns in your database, right? Well, the thing is, you won't actually lose information because when you look at this, um, I mean, this is a very simple query. So we might be able to pull some information out of there because we like we wrote this maybe a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago or something, and we, we we might even be using like an SQL builder or some other library or to to create the actual SQL statement, right? But when we look at this, this doesn't really necessarily say, well, we updated the board, or like we, we replenished the stock of a board game. This doesn't mean anything to the business as well. So you also lose implicit information because what you can do is when you have a bunch of events, you can start to figure out patterns between those events. And that is implicit information that is very, very valuable for your business maybe because what you could see is you could see your, you could actually kind of like figure out the behavior of your, of your users and then maybe improve your system according to that. So all of, the, all of that information you would normally lose because, I mean, if you have an audit log, then you might be, then, then, then you, you may be able to get that information as well. But the thing is, when you have an audit log, then why aren't you just event sourcing? Because the thing is, is that if you're event sourcing and having an audit log in there, then they will actually diverge. Or like, sorry, sorry I said that wrong. If you have like a, a normal database, just with, a, with regular tables and just updating those, those, those tables, right, and all those columns, uh, and you have an auto lock, then those things they're, they're, like they're not actually like tied together. So what they'll eventually just diverge because if you forget to update the code that changes the auto lock, then I mean the auto lock is just like uh, like all of a sudden automatically incorrect. So that's not very helpful. So if you have an auto lock, if you if you like really need, need an auto lock, then event sourcing is like one of the perfect most perfect things you can have. So with event sourcing and with domain events specifically as well is then when we know what when we actually know what ha what and when it happened. So um, I'll actually like uh, continue on that thing a little bit later because first we have to talk about how things are stored kind of. So we have a bunch of events stored somewhere, somewhere in in, in, like in some database. I'll get, get later on that, but we have we have these events stored in some 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 way, and they're all like. Just all the, like uh, all, all spread out, and what what we need to do is we need to try to order them because like we, we need to make sense of all of these events, right? So these are a couple of events, and uh, these are tied to to just specific board games. Well, this this thing like one one of those columns is actually called an event stream, and an event stream is literally an append only array that has an identifier that has an ID, and an ID is most of the time with event sourcing specifically. Uh, a UUID and why UUID? Well, the thing is, is you can literally generate 100 million UUIDs per second for like 100 years or something, and then you might only have like one collision probably. So th these things are extremely unique, uh, which is um, very helpful if you want to have literally millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of events or millions and millions, of whatever, right? So I can continue forever. So these domain events are stored in, in sequence of time. So, and they also represent the life cycle of, of, your, of, your, domain, of your domain concept of like, uh, for instance, in our example, we have a board game. Our, our, the, the concept of, 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 of uh, a domain concept in our system is a board game, right? 
So the question is, how do we then record these events? Like, how do we actually get this process started? Like, because of, like creating one of those domain events is, is, is as simple as just instantiating the class and throwing in the values in there, right? But how do we then store these events? Well, we do it through the object itself. So uh, who here knows actually what name constructors are? Awesome. Well, this is a name constructor. And what it basically is, is it's actually a, a, a factory method. So in, it's the equivalent of this, literally. So in, but in, instead of uh, creating the board game through the new keyword, what you do is you actually use the language of the business because like, we're going to start selling the board game, right? So this is useful to actually have in there because what, what, like, we, we can now look, look at the code and we, we, like, we immediately know what's a, what is actually happening. Like, we don't have to figure out what's happening. Like, if we have new people coming as well in, 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 inside, the, inside the, the company or whatever, we have new developers, then they can look at this code and then they, they, they say immediately, well, the board game started selling here. All right. so, so this is all useful information to have in your code. Uh, and this is all the information that's necessary for our system uh, to have a valid board game. Like we, we just need a name and a price, and that's it. And in this very simplistic example, we're storing the price as an integer, or sorry, as a, well, yeah, as an integer. Um, I wouldn't recommend this always store your uh, uh, money in uh, cents, obviously, because, you know, rounding errors. But this is what the actual start, start selling or start selling method looks like. We, we accept the name and a price, and then inside, inside of that method, we uh, recreate the UUID, instantiate the board game, because we need to somehow instantiate the board game, right? And then we um, call, it, call this record method on there, and then we instantiate the actual start selling board game event class. Uh, and this accepts all of those parameters to make that d domain event valid, to, to actually have like a valid consistent domain event, right? And then we immediately um, apply th that event. What you might notice here is that we're not actually changing the values. We're not actually like adding the name somewhere, um, or like like a a a adding the name. Or a a um, sorry, we're not actually changing the name property inside this class. Uh, what what happens is that the, the apply method takes care of that, right? So, um, and I'll get back a little bit later when uh, when we actually call the apply method. So, we have all of these steps in here, and I should have done this. When I was talking through it, and then we record, then then we return the actual board game, because we need the instance of, because we have to get the events out somehow. So all of this um, means that when this when this has happened, that the board game, and I know this is kind of like bright, but the the board game will then hold this hold the actual uh, instantiation of the domain event class, right? Well, then what? Well, we get back to pending events because at that moment, the, this this specific entity. The, the, this, this object has pending events, and we need to store those events somewhere. Um, but where do we store them? Is your question? I, I all hear you asking it. Um, well, we store. We, we use an event store, and an event store is literally just one table that looks like this. It's the most simple. It's the most simple thing ever. Uh, we have some identifiers, so we have the stream ID, and the stream ID is, uh, for instance, in this game, the the board game ID. Because we need to, we need to, we need to attach all of these domain events to just one point, right? And then we have each event uh, also get their own uh, UUID because I mean maybe we want to get the, this this one event back from the event store later instead of just the entire row. And then it has the version, and what the version is, I'll explain in a, in a second as well. And then we have the payload metadata is additional information that you might want to store in there. Uh, and here, the, the, like, so if you want to actually store the IP address, for instance, or the, or the request ID, or if you have like cache or other technical information, this is where you want to store it in the metadata, in, not in the actual payload, because the payload is just for the domain, it's just for the business, but you want to store it in the, in the metadata name, and then when it, when it was actually recorded, right? So uh, we have the the instance of the of the the, of the client to to our event store, and we just uh, Get back the ID, the ID from the uh, board game, and then we write the events to back to, uh, or we, we write the events to the uh, to the event store. Well, um, what happened now is we we started selling the board game. It was extremely popular because it, I don't know if you do, does any 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 of you actually play board games? Raise hands. Who knows Cold Express the board game? Also, well, if you all play board games, you should play Cold Express. It's one of the most fun games actually I've ever played. It's also the best game of 2015, I think, uh, best board game. So it's insanely fun. You should actually play it. Uh, 
So it was insanely popular. People bought it in heaps, and now it's out of stock. Well, we have to replenish the stock, obviously. But how do we then get back the actual state of that object? Because, well, we, we just persisted those events. We just stored those events. And now, I mean, like, how, how do we actually get back the latest state of this, of this board game, right? Well, um, we, we, if you use Doctrine, for instance, or if you use Eloquent or some other ORM, what you can do is you could say you, you can just uh, get it back very easily. And the thing is, with event sourcing, it's basically the same, but what you do is you um, first get back all of the events. So you, you have the actual ID somewhere stored, and then you get back all the events, and then you rebuild the actual board game because you have all of these events. So from the start, uh, you, you, get all, you, you get all these events, then you throw them in the, in the rebuild from, which is also, again, a name constructor. Um, so at, at this moment, we have, actually, we have two ways to actually instantiate this board game and have it in a valid state. So the, like we, we, we cannot cre create the board game and actually um, change some data um, out of nowhere, or like, like to, to change some data wrong, because we can only start selling the board game or we can um, rebuild, re like re actually rebuild it from uh, previously stored events. So everything, like all this code in here is, is very simple, and this is actually like the production code I use as well. Um, it's very, it's very easy, honestly. So we start to hit the board game, and then we apply every event. And this, this apply method looks like this. It's uh, the most simple thing ever, again. Um, so it just checks for, it just checks if the instance of a domain event, if, if, if the instance of the domain event matches this one, and then it applies. And then in, in the apply method, um, it literally does this. It just assigns the, it just assigns the values to those, to those properties, right? And then we can start changing them again, or do whatever. So we want to restart the board game, and we need a lot of them, so we restart the board game, 6066. Then we um, get back all these events again, and we write them back to the store. Well, the thing is that um, we, need to sh we need to actually show these, these, these domain events, right? We need to actually, or no, not these domain events. We need to actually show these, these board games, because, well, we have a store, and uh, start selling board game is like, uh, well, if you have all of these um, e all these domain events, that's not very friendly or user experience friendly because if you just throw all of these domain events, on, if you throw all these domain events on the screen, then the user will have no idea what to actually what, what, what they're actually looking at. So we need a listing of these domain events. Um, but the thing is that uh, replaying so re replaying events is actually wait a second. This is old, anyhow. So uh, forgetting all of that, what I just said, because that's old code, old, old slides. Um, re re replaying these events is is cheap. So uh, like uh, actually getting back all of these events uh, the, the, through through the client and then replaying all those back. That's very easy because um, PHP is actually kind of fast to some extent. But um, if you start to have like thousands and thousands of events, like if you, if you like my maximum that I actually used was I believe like three thousand events or something at some point, and that was just literally to have a test because normally one of the, one of those objects will never have three thousand events unless you work in like banking or I don't know some other gambling whatever. Um, so, but at some point it'll become expensive. But for most of us it won't. But at some point it actually will, right? Um, well, this is kind of where read models will come into play because if you wanna, if you if you if you try to replay every object that that you need on every request, what what you will do is you will then uh, for, for 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 like a bunch of different objects for like the member object and the board game object and all these other objects, if you try to actually get all those back every request, you have to rebuild them every request. So that means that you might re you you might actually be rebuilding a couple objects and maybe like a couple hundred events or something. And if you're gonna do that, then that's not very optimized, right? So read models, they are just objects that read data state from some place, from, from, from somewhere in your, in your architecture, right? And in this case, it's a projection. And this is a projection. Uh, the projection is something you might actually be, be used to. It's just literally just a normal relational database table, for instance, or it's, uh, you could use a text file, or you could use a graph, Q, uh, the, the um, Neo4j, for instance, or, or whatever. You can use anything basically you want, but a projection is, uh, the state of the events put somewhere, um, and this is the latest state of our of our board game. So a projection can be several things, like a MySQL table, an Elasticsearch document, and all those other things, right? 
So how do we create this then the, 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 this projection? Well, we have a projector, and a projector is very simple. Uh, it is just uh, like an like an event listener that listens to these events, and then um, gets the data from those events and just stores it somewhere. So what we could do, what we could have is we could have a listener that listens to those events, and then we just uh, execute a very simple SQL query that updates our table, right? And That'll look something like this because the, the, the projection on the right side is the equivalent of all the played back events on the left. Uh, that, that's how we got to that actual state. Just uh, drink some water. So, the key thing to remember is that with projections, um, you modify it with each event. And the cool thing is, is that the projections are actually disposable because what you could do is you could just remove it, you, like just destroy the entire thing. And because you have these events in a separate, separate storage, you can just re replay them again uh, and all will be good, right? So this is actually very similar to bank, how, like how banking works and a lot of other things, but banking is the most, uh, most common example, or the most simple example I can find really, is that your bank balance is literally just a sum of all of your transactions that you ever made or ever had. So you can have like credit, debit, it, and then you spend some money, got some money, spent some more. I like the new iPhone or whatever, that thing is insanely expensive. I think it's even more expensive than this. Anyhow, um, at some point you end up with some arbitrary number and that is then your, uh, the, 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 that is then your bank balance. So that is the latest state of your bank balance, right? So this is very cool if you think about it because um, bank balance like this, this one, this one number is obviously a very simple example, right? But you can imagine that when you have all these events, all for, for for like all these different objects, and then at some point, if you decide to actually change your system drastically, like how how it looks, for instance, and you have all these different pages, well, what you could do is you could literally just throw them away, create a new schema, and all create all these new objects that actually read from these schemas um, and tables. And then you can just reproject all these events, like grab all the events that are necessary, and create the state that you need, and then everything you know is good. Uh, so with events, since you're recording everything, we can actually react to everything. Um, but there's one little disclaimer, and so like it's actually like a, right now like a, a hot debate or a hot topic that some people say that you should not actually uh, record uh, event source the entire. Yeah, like your entire application, but some say that you should event source the entire application. Anyhow, I think right now still, like we're kind of like in a, in a weird phase with event sourcing. I think we shouldn't personally be, uh, event source the entire thing because it is quite expensive um, to maintain. Um, and that is just because when, when those events are actually stored in the system, and you you, you, you want to actually uh, ch change change those events, right? Well, what you would need to do is you would need to go through all of those events, and this is all in production at some point, uh, and you would have to modify all that state, and that is actually against uh, the, the like the, the core the core concept of, and principles of event sourcing because event sourcing like the, those domain events are set in stone, they're like the history, and like right now we as humans cannot also ch not change history, right? So um, why should we then ch be able to change all of this? Anyhow, um, so the <coughs> sorry, do not actually store your, do not actually event source your entire application because of the because of the insane high cost of maintaining it. So we actually replenish the stock of our uh, board, of our board game now, but our customers need to know about it because what what are they going to do? Like refresh the page every five minutes and hopefully there's there's new stock in there, right? No, that's that's not how we work because for the first century and we have cool technology like phones to get emails on or whatever, or notifications. Anyhow, so we just notify them. And the thing, the, the cool thing about event sourcing is everything can be at, at some point, like all of a sudden, uh, event driven because, well, you have these events and they are, the event, like you can actually then uh, dispatch them through your event dispatch and then you can ha have all of these things listening to it and do all of these cool, amazing things that you would normally have to do in the same request, for instance, or whatever, right? So we listen to the board game software replenished event and then it goes through a message bus, which is just literally an uh, event dispatcher. It, oh, this is the event, apparently. It says hi. And then it's at some point, we'll hit the actual listener because the listener is listening to this specific event. And then we execute that listener. And this is a very long name, but it is very descriptive. And I, like, I, I, didn't, I did not actually have to look in this, in this class because by reading the actual name, I, I immediately know what's going on. And 
And this is not the longest class I've ever had. My, the longest class I've ever had had like 33 words, I believe it was. And it might, might not have been the best <laughs> name, but you know, I knew what was going on. So anyhow. And then it continues into nothing. Anyhow, and at the end, all is good, like always. So these listeners we, we were talking about, um, th th those things can actually have state, right? So we call them process managers. And so if listeners have state, process managers. And a, a very good example of this is, for instance, an, ex an admin, uh, administration application where the trial ends when 10 invoices have been sent, right? And these invoices, of, uh, the, the, the send invoices are obviously stored also in domain events. So we have all these domain events fired. Our business is booming. Like we, we just started, but at some point we already had in the first month, we already have 10 invoices sent, bunch of money. Um, anyhow, not actually money because, and, and <laughs> stupid jokes. Uh, I should continue this. Um, so the, the 10 invoices are sent, and then when, when the 10th uh, actually is, is sent, right? Um, a, a, side effect, a side effect is, uh, is triggered. We uh, re, uh, re, re, rebuild the entire state of, of the account and then we call the end trial. And this will then also uh, store another, another event and that will then be able to pick up by some other listener which will then send the email to the actual user, right? So this is like how you can have like these, these chain events uh, of, of actions in your system. So one last thing. <coughs> Who are here? <laughs> Stupid question. Who is the database for? Raise your hands, please. All right, cool. Basically, everyone. Um, so, we, well, you know that that, that the the, the um, it's it's mostly like your your database. Uh, wait. Oh, I had another question. Um, who are here has multiple systems accessing that same database? Raise hands. All right, cool. That's very dangerous, by the way. Just saying. I do. I, I have it too, but you know, it's 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 a, it's a tricky thing. And why is it a tricky thing? Well because you can have shared state. And what, what, what it is, is it's actually shared mutable state. Um, so to illustrate this, is we have a database, an application, and this inserts something into this database, right? And then it gets something back, and then we have some other thing, and then we have some more things, and more things, and blah, blah, blah. And all these things are tr accessing the same database. Well, this seems simple enough at first, because, you know, we had to like we we did we didn't have to change anything. We just created all these new applications, and we had a data we had the data there somewhere. So why not just use it, right? Um, well, everything is accessed, which is difficult because then the consistency will be tough. Um, to illustrate this again, for, uh, to, to illustrate consistency is that well we have two services and they both get the, the same data at the same time, right? Um, but then service one changes that data internally, like in in, in memory, um, to ABCD. And service two changes it to ABX, right? And service two is kind of faster; it's on a new server or whatever. And then it changes the it changes the the it, pers it persists the latest change of, of that of that board game, which is a very simple representation of the board game, right? But it changes the state in the table. So right now on the right, you see the table that's ABX. And then service one comes along and then also persists the data but it's A, B, C, D then at some point, and then service two is all like, what the hell, I just changed this data, but it's not, not there anymore, so then you throw, like you throw over your workstation and you just go home and whatever, uh, cry in a corner. And um, the thing is that event sourcing can help with this consistency problem, because with event sourcing you're not actually changing this data, you're just appending new things, right? So there, there's no real conflict in there, and um, that's awesome in my opinion. It's one of, like, one of the added benefits of using event sourcing that you actually not really think about, but it's a very big problem if you then have inconsistent state in this one application and like you, you're actually trying to figure out what, why it's happening, uh, but you probably do not like have a, um, well you can actually look at the logs, but it's not abundantly clear what's happening because, you know, whatever. Um, so what other things are possible with event sourcing? Sorry, amazing things are possible. Well, with event sourcing, you basically have a time machine at your disposal, which is actually pretty awesome. And I hear you all say and like think about this movie, right? Uh, Back to the Future. Anyhow, um, when when these new events are uh, actually stored and you're 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 passing them on the um, on the event dispatcher, what you can do is you can have listeners generate um, generate HTML pages. So what what you might have is Let's say you're organizing a conference, right? Let's say DrupalCon, and you have a CRM, and in that CRM you have all of the data for your speakers. 
but then you want to generate the actual uh, page, which is a different application. You want you want to you want to uh, generate the website, uh, which is just a, like a like a standalone thing. But you don't want to pull all the information from the database because you want to have it as, as fast as possible, as very snappy. And you also do not want to in, like invest maybe in caching or whatever, which is very simple, of course. But you want to have just generated HTML pages with the content in there because that's still the fastest thing ever. And then you can also cache it to make it even faster. Anyhow, uh, you can have that. You can you can have all of the all of the uh, all of the information in the in the at CRM in a separate system. And if that system then throws an event, and you can actually listen to those events, to so listen to those changes. Uh, you could then uh, generate your uh, pages fr from that, right? So that's also very cool to using events. And you can project to uh, multiple things. So let's say you have uh, MySQL for actually showing data on the screen. And then you have Elasticsearch for searching. Um, like you, you, can have one, you can have one event that is, that, is, that is thrown on the event dispatch and then you have multiple listeners listening to this same event and changing data in multiple places. Same thing goes for uh, like the, the, the new version of your uh, of your uh, board game, well, well, let, let, let's say that, that you have a, like a dashboard of the board game, right, or, or something, and you want to have 5% of the users then have the new version, but you want to still want to have the old version running. Well, you can just create it, like create another listener, and th that listener will then persist the data to this, this new table. And if you have, well, you obviously need some other system to actually manage that, uh, that, that load, right, that the 5% the of the people actually get the new version. But the data is, is all there, and if your application supports it, then Always good again, uh, and then we have also the, like the best auto lock ever because you know all of the events uh, they, we 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 cannot actually change state without storing events. So everything that has happened to the system um, is actually in events. And fixing schema bugs or schema changes are very, very simple as well because you just throw away like I, like I already said throw away the schema and then replay all those events. And you, if you want, I mean like. Let's say you uh, have, have, an, have an application, and at some point you want to tweet um, when you have like a million people, or like a million users, or whatever. Well, you can have a listener that listens to that actually counts up the amount of uh, subscribed members, and this is like it's just a little, like a like a little gimmick, but I think it's fun. Like, and all of these things are very possible with when you actually use events, not necessarily uh, event sourcing, but more domain events. But event sourcing and domain events work very well together. So, um, you can also do much like much more, obviously. Um, but uh, that's all for my talk. Uh, I know it was kind of rambly and kind of like here and there, but I don't know, that's kind of like the way I present, so <laughs> it's, it's whatever. Um, but I want to say one last thing. Um, a friend and I, um, we have created like this, this, this awesome, awesome education platform. It's, it's, a, it's a, a, an online workshop. It's a course, basically. It's called Event Sorcery. And it's an introduction to uh, domain-driven design, CQRS, and event sourcing. And we go into insane depth into every of these topics. Right now, I believe, we uh, like uh, two hours ago, we, we released another episode on CQRS, literally everything on CQRS, like the most descriptive, uh, 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 the most descriptive explanation of CQRS ever, uh, in our opinion, obviously. Uh, but yeah, we have like uh, two and a half, three, hour, uh, three hours of video right now, and we're constantly adding videos. Uh, so because it's kind of like a living product, what we did is, uh, what we're doing is uh, we're also getting back feedback uh, for, from, from people. And then if they want to if they want to see like a change in the video, for instance, then we make those changes and re-upload the videos again. So um, if other people like have feedback or like have questions or whatever, then we can incorporate those into videos and help other people as well. Um, that's the entire thing. It has it's like an early access right now because we have because we we don't have all of the videos in there. It's like an insanely reduced price. Anyhow, that's event source free. Again, thanks a lot for listening to me ramble. Um, Nick Spelt is a friend of mine who made the uh, made the image, so he's an awesome designer. Whatever exactly, uh, like he does a lot of things. But I wanted to give him credit for that awesome image in the in the beginning. And um, are there any questions? If not, then that's easy for me, obviously, but... Uh, oh, yeah, there's a microphone. <laughs> Didn't even see Hello. that. Hello, hi. Hi. So I did a project where I have an application which monitors solar power plants. Awesome. And uh, cool. I did it event-based by accident. <laughs> oh. I didn't know after. That's that. actually how event sourcing got discovered because it's it's like an, an it's just a natural thing of how how humans tend to think because humans tend to think in events. Mm. So then, then that's how event sourcing basically got discovered. Yeah, I, but I still have a question about scaling. Um, the 
the data gets in every five minutes from the power inverters. Okay. And um, if I store every value, um, um, after a month or so, I get into scaling programs to when I replay all the events um, to get the current state of a, of a plant. Mm -hmm. um, I, I save the states into projections per day, mm -hmm. but I don't know uh, if it's work in, say, five years or so. Okay, so, so how long does it actually take to rebuild these, these, these projections? Um, no, it takes about mm, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Okay, so I know systems that literally take a, an entire weekend to ge regenerate the extra projection. Okay. Because like, uh, th th this is actually how, how all these uh, like hi highly uh, consistent and highly available systems work, like banking, for instance, and all these other systems they have like millions of events. Um, and it, like, if if you need if you need to uh, generate some report or whatever, it doesn't really matter if uh, if if the data isn't really um, if the, if the actual projection isn't isn't um, immediately consistent. So the thing is that what you get, what you have is, is this concept called ev eventual consistency. Is that uh, when when you write information to to, to to the actual event store, it's possible that the projection doesn't immediately have the latest data. So the actual person who is viewing the website or viewing the application. Might not see the actual uh, might, might not see the actual la latest latest information. Um, it really depends on your business and on on your on your actual application and, and like the requirements of that. If if you actually want to have it like immediately consistent, that that is the, that, that is like the question. So is it important for you to have the data like immediately consistent or, or is like one time a day like an, like a, well, one time a day an update? Is that perfectly fine for you? That, that that's basically a question I would ask. Uh, if you can get it down to like near real time, that's awesome. Um, which is bit like t ten seconds is insanely cl like in 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 insanely close to real time uh, in, in my book uh, because I, I have projections that take like a couple couple hours. Yeah. Right? But so. when when I generate a, a daily report uh -huh. and the projection takes longer than a day to to generate. <laughs> I mean. Um, there's not really a way around that, honestly. Uh, that 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 that's that's it's one, like one of the things with events. Yeah, it's 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 just it's one of the one of the problems. Um, I I I have some ideas on this, but um, we might not like we, we might want to talk about it afterwards because that could take a while. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, um, it, it, like the question is that does it really matter to your business? Like it, that, that that that's the thing. And if so, well, what you could do is you can have um, one of the solutions is uh, create snapshots, for instance, that instead of um, so you, you, yeah, th th those are actually like m m mini projections. So every 500 events, for instance, well, what you do is that you then create a snapshot of those of, of that state, so and then accumulation. Yeah, hmm. yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they call it snapshot but, or whatever. It's okay. it's, 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 it's different in each like sector. It's different in each uh, category. Anyhow, um, that's one of the one, one of the possibilities. Obviously, uh, other than that, there's not really much you can do and. Uh, maybe I don't know of a way as well that that's also very possible because I started learning event sourcing a couple of years ago, and uh, it's it is like the, the concept is simple, but you know all these other problems that are caused because of event sourcing. It, it does a lot of awesome things, but it also increases increases the complexity of your system like by a couple hundred times. <laughs> so uh, so yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, so yeah, we could talk about it afterwards. Any other questions? Yeah, you were talking about um, um, different systems um, contributing to the same, or were writing to the same mm -hmm. database. Yeah. Um, um, I haven't seen how you would potentially resolve conflicts or make sure that the events are replayed in the right order when they come from different systems. How do right. you identify? Yeah. Um, well, do, do, do you remember the version thing in the, in the, in the schema? Okay. Well, th that that is actually like the, the 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 number in line. Like so. So the the ver the first uh, event appended to an event stream has a version number one. The version is basically just the order number, right? Um, because the the thing is, is whether uh, what if you have all of these these uh, ver very fast systems, or if you have all of these systems that are like appending events every millisecond or whatever, uh, you can actually you cannot really trust time, and especially with distributed systems, you cannot trust time because time is different in each machine and time zones or whatever, right? So what what you what uh, what you want to have, uh, well, one of the solutions is you can have uh, the, the you can w when you get back all of the events, then you actually know the latest version, and then you just increase that number, right. 
and then then you try to repent that. And if you try to like, so l l let's say you already have 44, uh, 44, 44 events in there, and you try to repent another 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 event that is number forty four, then it might throw a conflict as well. Um, that's one of the things that that, that that actually like prevents you and and makes it that, that so that event sourcing that that your uh, storage your 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 state is highly consistent. But the thing is that uh, then that might that that actually makes it less available because consistency and like like being both consistent and available is extremely tough, especially when you like have all the like like have uh, ten thousand events for instance per second or whatever. That that's extremely tough. So you kind of like have to choose one or the other. Like it's highly consistent or highly available. And what you can do is you can, like if it's highly available, let, let, let's say it throws an error, it throws an exception, like we already have this version. Or what you can do is you could create like a, like, a, like a version two of that event stream that copies the entire thing and then adds it on there as well. And then later you can, you can look at that and then you can manually merge those things or you can have some automated system do, do all of that. So uh, that's one of, the, one of the options. So you kind of like have to choose highly consistent, available. It's tough, I know. Thank you. No worries. I, I have a small question. Sure. What do you, um, what do, you do if you have a uh, distributed uh, like systems, uh, but then you have side effects that happen? For example, you have an account balance, mm -hmm. like let's say 10 euros, and then you have one, um, one place you uh, deduct 20 and the other one adds 30. But there is an event that happens when the balance gets below zero, for yeah. example. But then it depends on which order the, they get back played. So back. this is actually fun because I started reading more about banking <laughs> for this research. It's just an example. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so the thing is that uh, with with, uh, with banking, um, if you go if you go to an ATM, for instance, um, it could be that the power is out, like that the connection is is just gone, it's just dropped, right? So what happens then is you can actually withdraw as like as much money as you want because. That that's what banks want. They like they, they want high availability over consistency. So what happens then at some point? Let, let's say that you have only ten euros in the bank, and then um, you, you withdraw 30, 30 euros. Then you actually have like a like a like a you just, you're like my, you're you're in the negative, right? So um, <laughs> that's how banks use it because or, or do it because they just want to they just want to be highly available. And then obviously like you're not gonna escape a bank. Right? <laughs> so no, no, I, I was just wondering. But um, when there's side effects, like you, you, your account gets cancelled when, when you're below uh, zero. So it, it depends on whether you first like got the, 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 the transfer from someone else, and or you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, so, so that in Git there would be a conflict. <laughs> well, th that actually depends because again, like, do, do, do you want to be like highly consistent? Because if you're highly consistent, then you won't have any conflict at all. Because, because it'll actually lock, like like, okay. it, like yeah. the, the same okay. thing as, as um, uh, the event store will actually lock like the the, the, the thing, right, or the, the actual transaction. So that 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 is that is one like one of the one of the possibilities. Or you just let it happen and you figure it out anyway. Because like, what what's the worst thing that can happen? Like, uh, so, some account owes you like thirty euros. Uh, well, if if you have like a couple hundred or a couple thousand or a couple millions users, it doesn't really matter. And and th 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 that's like one of the things that do you really want to be programming every solution ever or do you just want to have like a good error system that actually catches that error and then notifies the the, the, the correct people and th they'll, they'll actually handle the situation because if this only happens like one time in a thousand or one time yeah, in two thousand so then like, you might want to not so essentially it. your solution is to to like let it happen and, and try basically to, yeah try, it's, try it's, to notify the, the people and, and uh, yeah. shift the problem to the business side uh, exactly away from the, the exactly <laughs> that, that, that's actually like one of the things that I always do is I, I I don't actually make it my problem I make it their problem and yeah. then they'll actually give me give me a solution and then I'll program it right so that that's yeah. like the, the best thing to do because I'm I'm a developer and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a telling developer but I do not know how your business runs or like I, I do not know how you want to run your business so and I'm not actually gonna make those decisions as well. So, uh, er, like every time I have a question, even if it's the most stu stupid question ever, I just ask them. Um, I mean, like, what's the worst thing that, that they can ha that can happen? They actually think that you're a complete idiot. Well, who cares, <laughs> right? So, I mean, that so, so yeah, like it, it just depends. Uh, it, like so, so sometimes you might you might want to have an automated system that take care of, that take care of that. But if it's like a one one in a million type case or whatever, then I would just let it happen and. Record error. Cool. Any other questions? 
All right, that's it then. Um, if you start playing Overwatch, add me. <laughs> uh, it's an awesome game. And uh, thank you for listening.